the Infinity 200 series instruments come with filter holders that have both the emission and the excitation filters mounted in the same holder. The horizontal position is where the emission filters go and the vertical positions are where absorbance and or fluorescence excitation filters can be positioned. There is a small memory chip located on the front end of the filter holder that is used to record what filters are in which position. The memory chip allows for users to have multiple holders with different combinations of filters on them. To perform an assay using the filter combinations you want, you'll simply make sure you've ejected the filter slide that's inside and then take and insert your replacement filter slide or holder in through the slot here and the instrument will bring it in automatically. And then it will take a reading of the memory chip so it knows which filters are loaded on the holder. To eject a filter from a Infinity instrument you'll need to select the move filter out button located in the top menu. Here's a quick tip on how to replace or exchange filters from the filter holders. Filters are held in place by these black plastic O-rings. The O-ring has a couple tabs on the outer edges and those tabs match to cutouts within the opening for the filter holder. The instrument comes with a couple different tools for managing filters. I find that these tweezers work best and uh, in order to get the filter O-rings off you simply run one of the pointed ends of the tweezers underneath the o-ring and then it will lift out. You can also use the tweezers for replacing the o-rings. Here's how that works. You can guide the o-ring into position and then use the tweezers to help press it into place like so. Just run the, the pointed end around the outside to make sure it's seated properly. Being careful of course not to um, try and touch the filter if there's one in place. In this case I'm just doing an example here on one of these black plastic plugs that are used in the case where filters are not put in a particular position. When placing filters in the holders you have to be mindful that there is a direction through which the light should pass through the filter. Typically light will pass from the top through the bottom of the filter. Many filters actually have an arrow on the side indicating the direction through which the light should pass. Because light is passing through the filter holder in a particular direction, you have to orient the filters to make sure that the filter arrows are pointing in the direction the light is traveling. In the case of this particular holder, light travels from left through right, and then eventually, if there is fluorescence being detected, light is going to be transmitted up and through this particular emission filter section. Therefore, filters placed on this side, on the excitation side, the arrows must point inward and filters placed in the emission, the arrows should point up. Another way to say this is that the top side of the filter should face out here and the top side of the filter should be placed in head first into this particular side of the holder. Filter positions on the holders are numbered one through four with this position being number one, two, three, and four. Once you've installed your filters, you're going to want to place that filter holder in the instrument. Open the door here, slide the filter in, let the instrument grab hold of it and drag it in. From there, you're going to want to go to the software into settings under filter definitions and change the definitions of the filters for each of the four positions where you've installed filters or not. In the filter definition window, you're going to want to step through each of the tabs for position 1, 2, 3, and 4 and program what type of filter is there. As in this case, all of the filters I've installed are for fluorescence, so I've made sure that I selected FL for fluorescence as the type of filter. And then type in the wavelength of the filter, its bandwidth for both excitation and emission, and then the software also allows you to give a unique name to the filter as a description so that as you're using the filters in the software, it will also display the correct wavelength. 
There's also a way of indicating what the purchase date is of the filter, and the software keeps track of how many times the filter has been used or flashed upon. So step through each of these. If you do not have a filter in the position, make sure you select Empty. Then save. And you'll hear the instrument make a sound where it's writing the information of these definitions to the memory chip. That way it will always remember which filters are on that holder.